If you've been on this channel long, you'll know I value freedom really highly. I've made a whole series on how a free society would work, and you can check out the description of this video, and most of the rest of these videos are about why we're not free and why we should be. I think most people value freedom, but they've been trained to only value their own freedom. They always seem to have reasons why other people should be less free. They want other people to act the same, or at least within the same limits, which just happen to be the limits imposed on us by authority. What if we didn't care? What if we just left people alone to figure out what's right for themselves and act accordingly? Would society collapse? Only if it's built on oppression and demands conformity. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. Before we go on, shout out to Curiosity River for sponsoring this video. Go to CuriosityRiver.com to stream videos about amazing topics like how politics and the economy work, how to see through propaganda, how to think critically about history. Oh, wait, no, that's, that's this channel. I forget what Curiosity River is. But thanks for the hundred grand! When I think of freedom, I think of being able to do what you want to do, as long as you're not hurting or forcing others, in which case freedom becomes power. This definition of freedom means that you wouldn't be forced into labor you don't want to do. It means you're not forced to be somewhere, so you can go wherever you want, and you're not forced to associate with anyone, so you can leave, too. It means you're not under the constant threat of punishment for doing something that doesn't actually hurt other people. At present, we have none of those freedoms. Oh, we have them to a degree. And you can think of freedom in terms of degrees. I'm obviously more free than someone in prison, for example. But as absolute freedom goes, we don't have any of them. Sure, we don't have to stay in the same place, but most people can't go wherever they want because of borders and money. Sure, we're not forced to work, but we if we don't, we'll probably go hungry. Sure, we're not forced to associate with people, except at school, at work, and if you can't afford your own place, at home too. Sure, you're free to vote, but you're not free to choose someone who isn't on the ballot, or, you know, nobody. No one's free to opt out of the political system, or the economy. And it would be nice to avoid the stress of the constant threat of punishment, but bosses, laws, and police make that impossible. I'd be happier if people were aware of their lack of freedom and wanted to do something about it. But most of them will tell me I'm ungrateful for the tiny amount of freedom they say I have, and have no interest in expanding on it. If they saw anyone deviating from the rules, they would encourage that person's punishment. That's because they don't believe in freedom. They believe in conformity. I noticed about Ten years ago, maybe, when I first started thinking about what these words actually mean, that most of the people who talk about freedom don't really believe in it. They're fair-weather friends of freedom. They use the word as a sign, maybe that they're patriotic or that they have ideals, but scratch them and you'll find an authoritarian. I believe in freedom, they'll say, or this country is all about freedom. Oh, okay, so you agree people should be free to enter this country without years of long waits and fees and forms and interviews. You know, like it used to be. No, no, not that kind of freedom. Illegal immigration and the law and stuff. 
Hmm. Oh, okay, so how about the freedom of the poor to have the things they need, even if they don't have enough money? Well, those people need to get a job. No handouts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about the freedom not to be expected and forced to follow every one of the millions of laws on the books? Or at least the laws that criminalize victimless activities? No, you got to follow the law. Mm. Because what politicians write down is more important than freedom. And because laws come from the Constitution. Yeah. See, I heard in elementary school that the people who wrote the Constitution were really, really smart. Therefore, we all have to do whatever the Constitution says forever and ever. That's... that's freedom. You're, you're not allowed real freedom. <laughs> but we'll tell you you're free every day as a substitute. You want an example of the complete disconnect between the word freedom and actually believing in freedom? While I was writing this piece, I stumbled across, quite accidentally stumbled across this website that sells American flags. And what it says is exactly what I'm talking about. It's all symbols and no substance. I want to read it to you in full. It won't take very long, but it's just such a good example that I had to read it. Why is America the symbol of freedom? Okay, well, keep that question in mind, and if you can find an answer to it anywhere on this page, please just leave a comment telling me where I missed it, okay? Let's read. The land of the free and the home of the brave. Words. <laughs> These simple words have defined a nation for more than 200 years and carry more weight than we can possibly imagine. No, they carry no weight. They are just words. They are empty words. America, i.e. the United States, has never been the land of the free. And I mean brave? What bra I mean, it's just as brave as anywhere else. Well, there's, there's no brave people in, in Russia or Japan. <laughs> meaningless. Uh, then, then says, freedom isn't free. Oh, God. Another empty slogan. They don't explain. They don't even try to back up at any point on this page. Another phrase we've heard many times, and another we quite possibly overlook on a regular basis. Well, my guess is if you're swallowing all this stuff, you probably say freedom isn't free 12 times a day. America is a country full of rich history and proud tradition. More empty words, meaningless, and I mean, what country doesn't have a rich history and a proud tradition? <laughs> Even in our somewhat young life as a nation. Is it young anymore? <laughs> the symbols that represent us are recognized all around the world. Yeah, but a lot of the time that's because they were brought there in war. And they help shape the kind of people that inhabit our country. Yeah, people who like war. Citizens who are proud, confident, and united as one. Well, there's nothing virtuous about being proud and confident, especially when you didn't deserve it. And united? Americans are united? Have Americans ever been united? Or is that just part of their way of, of dividing the people that they don't really consider real Americans, separating them and just saying, no, this, this particular group of people who are united around some symbols, they're united. <laughs> In fact, this whole thing about unity, you got to understand all nation states are held together by force. So, yes, you are united by the violence that we call the state. Um, if you mean ideologically united, well, that's just plain wrong. And it goes, freedom is something that comes with a cost and is never fully protected. Well, okay, true, but like flying a flag has anything to do with that. Something the 40th president of the United States, Ronald Reagan... <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, can a conservative go for five minutes without bringing up Reagan? What did Reagan say? Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one, way, one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. Hope you like my Reagan impression there. Uh, that's the best I can do. <laughs> but, but really, like, I mean, I mean, on the one hand, it's basically true. I mean, freedom is always, you know, one generation max away from extinction. But I mean, <laughs> who, which conservatives exactly can can look back and say things used to be free? I mean, they'll say it. They'll say, "Oh, we used to be so free," but what exactly has changed? I mean, yeah, there are worse laws out there. There are more powerful police. They have much greater powers of surveillance. But something tells me that that's not a problem for these people. I never see them complain about it. Since the signing of the Declaration, another symbol that doesn't, that doesn't say anything about it, on that important day in Philadelphia in 1776, symbols have represented the United States. Yes, only symbols, that's right. And stood for freedom across the country. Do you want to explain how? How do they stand for freedom? No, no, okay, okay, that's right. Each color on the American flag, including the stars and stripes, representing something different in the quest for freedom and upholding it. Oh, yeah? What? Do you want to say? You can't, you can't say, yeah. Even the bald eagle and fireworks on the 4th of July have become symbols of freedom in our nation. Yeah, symbols. Exactly. They're just symbols. Hardly any Americans do anything to fight for freedom, except for people, you know, the anti-racist and anti-fascist organizers. They're pretty much the only ones. Everyone else is, is fine to see it slip away, you know, as long as it's those nasty BLM rioters. They don't deserve freedom. They should all be locked up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> freedom. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Songs represent our nation and its freedom, from the star-spangled banner, America the Beautiful, and God Bless America. These songs invoke emotion and passion inside us on a deeper level that maybe we can't fully explain. Oh, I can explain it. Studies have found that in nuns, when nuns are praying to God, there's a certain part of their brain that gets illuminated. It's like talking to God or having some kind of holy spiritual experience. And just like that, they're in love with a symbol of nothing that cannot love you back. There is a reason we sing the, our country's national anthem before sporting events. We're honoring our great nation and reminding ourselves and each other how lucky we are to enjoy the comforts and luxuries we have in a free and prosperous nation. Well, some people have, anyway. Americans are a confident and ambitious people and are always striving for greatness and success. Okay, some of them, yeah, some people in other countries do that too. What does that have to do with freedom? This is a trait that President John F. Kennedy knew when discussed, when discussed the American people. The American, see, I don't know how to do JFK, sorry. The American by nature is optimistic. He's experimental, an inventor and a builder who builds best when called upon to build greatly. John F. Kennedy. Okay, so what does that have to do with anything? Don't know if I can give you very high marks on your essay here, buddy. So the next time you see an American flag, speak with a veteran, or celebrate the 4th of July, remember how blessed a nation America is and how valuable the freedoms it possesses are. Uh, yeah, sure. So, so to sum up, why is America a symbol of freedom because it has lots of symbols of freedom.
not a lot of political freedom or economic freedom, not, not actual specific freedoms, but you're free to buy as many symbols of a long-lost freedom as you can afford. It's not surprising people would use the word freedom without believing it in practice. I mean, freedom is invoked by politicians and parties, history textbooks, patriotic holidays, people who want to sell flags, and other sources of symbolic meaning. Thing is, it's symbolic of nothing. Many of the people who talk about freedom don't believe in it because they've never considered what the word means. They follow all the rules, even if they pretend they don't. They teach their kids to obey them, maybe even alongside the threat of physical punishment. To go to school, and do everything the teacher says, to find work, to pay taxes, etc., etc. They surround themselves with symbols of rebels and then argue, if you break the law, you deserve everything that happens to you. If you don't stop to think about the words you use, those words might mean something completely different from their original meanings. That's why I'm making this video. Now we have people using the word freedom as synonymous with anything the U.S. government does. Certainly anyone who invokes Reagan. Including whatever the U.S. military does, which can only ever destroy freedom. For them, freedom is no longer a word with a meaning that we can discuss philosophically or something we can implement practically. It's just another symbol of nationalism. But maybe if freedom were more than just what a marine screams out at the point of orgasm, people might take their freedom more seriously. Perhaps they would think about how little freedom they actually had and how to get it back. And for sure they'd stop imposing their beliefs on people and expecting them to conform to all social customs and laws. Because it doesn't take long to realize it's not freedom if everyone has to fall in line. You can have freedom, or you can have conformity, but you can't have both. For a long while now, freedom has been one of the characteristics invoked by people who want to prove the superiority of so-called Western civilization, which, by the way, doesn't exist. The representatives of this supposed civilization have gone to nearly every corner of the world imposing their will on the locals. They've killed and enslaved countless millions of people in the Americas, Africa, and Asia, not to mention their wars within Europe. When people say this civilization or this country is built on freedom, I have no idea what they're talking about. It's just more words. Anyone can say that. There's a good chance they've never thought about that claim before. Freedom's not the consideration when you're imposing an empire or a post-colonial state on people. Freedom's nowhere to be found when forcing people to work to feed a global market and taking the full value of their labor from them. There's no freedom on the plantation or the factory floor. There's no freedom in conscription, which was the norm in this so-called civilization until recently. The history of this civilization is the history of the freedom of a few rich white men to study and philosophize, while the rest of the world worked to keep them in luxury. Part of the problem is people can't see beyond the immediate confines of their culture. And they get all self-righteous that any attempt to change that culture or inst institutions is seen as an attack on them personally. So I can explain why competing with each other is a bad thing, and I hear words like, but human nature, and you just hate winners, instead of thank you for giving me a new perspective. I try to explain how systems actually work, as I always do on this channel, and I'll get told I'm just jealous of rich people. No. <laughs> I talk about what white supremacy is, and how it's embedded in cultural and political institutions, and people tell me I'm obsessed with race. <laughs> there are always knee-jerk words and phrases for people who have the insolence to 
question things and refuse to follow pointless rules. You'll hear them. Most people's approach to history seems to be that it should confirm their beliefs about how great their country is. And yes, I'm talking about your country, whichever one it is. <clears throat> They'll even use history to tell you how you should live in the present. They might say, our forefathers fought for something, and then assume you should not only agree that's what they fought for, but also act accordingly. We didn't fight for socialism they might say, when really, soldiers' intentions are completely irrelevant, because they have no say in the decisions. Who cares what they think they fought for? They served an empire. And these conservative boomer vets are another group who always talk about freedom, but in practice can't stand it, because they claim to have gone to war for freedom, which of course they did not, but even if they had, that would be a reason not to to interfere with other people's lives, not to start telling them what they should do. I mean, if you really fought for people's freedom, if you actually care about freedom, leave them alone. Or even better, fight for their freedom at home. The right wing invents problems where there are none in order to express their views about how everyone should conform. There's no border crisis or illegal immigration crisis? Who says? There are people trying to move freely around the world, and there are people pointing guns at them, telling them they're not allowed. The former, people who just want to go somewhere, are not the problem. The latter, the ones pointing guns at them for wanting to move, are the crisis. That's not how it's framed, because then it would be a question of freedom, and right-wingers would be called upon to explain why they're so unwilling to extend freedom to others. It's ironic how much right-wingers use the word freedom, because their view of things is extremely restrictive. For them, everything has to fit into their arbitrary little boxes. There's no problem with being gay or trans, but it doesn't fit the right's restrictive understanding of the world. So they pretend being gay or trans is a problem, so they can bully gay and trans people into suicide. And as soon as schools propose teaching accurate history, the right comes out to make all kinds of nonsense up about what they're teaching, incorrectly calling it critical race theory, calling it racist, because it has the word race in it, <laughs> saying it blames white kids for slavery, and, and more nonsense like that. In other words, the minute they spot something that doesn't conform to their way of thinking, they cook up reasons why it's wrong. They don't actually consider it. They're not interested in hearing new points of view. And they're certainly not interested in evaluating anything in relation to freedom. Perhaps they realize, deep down, they don't care about freedom. Because to them, conformity to an arbitrary ideal is what matters. That's because they don't understand something fundamental to freedom is solidarity. If enough people work together and protect each other, they can secure their freedom. But if you don't stand in solidarity with others, if you trade humanity for nationalism, if you ignore or shit on the struggles of oppressed peoples because of some minor material benefit you gain, the people oppressing others will oppress you too. And your kids. And each generation will be more oppressive and more brainwashed. One obvious example of the right's endless quest for conformity is how they refuse to understand gender, but still want an opinion on it. Their view of gender is stuck in the 1950s, like a lot of their views. So whenever someone suggests they might not conform to the penis equals man, vagina equals woman binary, instead of listening and learning from the people, or from the many studies confirming all this, they make jokes. They make lots of jokes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did I say lots? They make one joke. 
Look at the Babylon Bee. They can't stop. You know, they make a whole career out of their one joke that they didn't even invent. Look at all those. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. You, you, you get it? Because cause some people <laughs> say they identify as different genders and, and stuff. <laughs> I guess it's the only joke that gets funnier every time you tell it, huh? Hmm. How many times can you make the same pathetic joke and not get pelted with tomatoes? And it's not satire. Satire means punching up, or at least sideways, not punching down at marginalized people. But joking is part of their demand for conformity. If they weren't so afraid of freedom, they wouldn't care if people are in some way different from what they learned in kindergarten. Until recently, it was impossible for someone in North America to come out as trans or non-binary. Those words didn't exist. And when something is new and challenges people's thinking, they don't like it. They try to suppress it, often with violence. When people had a little window of freedom to peer through, they realized they didn't have to conform to the dominant beliefs, and that maybe their gender wasn't what they'd been assigned at birth. But the right wants to take even that freedom away, so they ignore the science and sociology of gender, they laugh in the faces of trans people, ban them from public spaces like bathrooms and sports teams, and sometimes kill them. That's how far people will go to enforce conformity. So right-wingers are generally opposed to freedom in stark contrast to their words, but the same could be said about many on the left, too. It varies, of course, on who they are, but some leftists are just as keen to impose their values on people as the right is. They just think their values are clearly right. That's why I left the left and kept moving left. I just can't stand hearing revolution used as a chance to set up a new kind of authoritarianism. People on the left tend to claim they care about the poor and the working class, but they don't all trust them to be free. So we need a few hundred years of dictatorship and forced labor, and then we can have the ideals we claim to believe in. Leftists who are engaged in mutual aid, strengthening communities, building real centers of resistance, they're doing good work. The ones who join parties to participate in elections are wasting everyone's time. The world is full of one or another brand of authoritarian. They just want different kinds of conformity. Some people expect you to act in accordance with their religious beliefs. Some expect you to follow every law. Others expect you to work like a slave because, well, that's the way the system works. They learned it in school and from their parents, from the workplace and from popular media, and they can unlearn it. As soon as they really start thinking about freedom and how important and valuable it is and realize we're only really free when everyone is free. If people believe in and respect each other's freedom, there will be freedom, whatever the law says. Where they demand conformity, they will destroy it.